it's good to be back. Um, yeah, it's been five years. Um, doesn't look like a lot's changed. Just two months after walking out of prison, Martin Shkreli is launching a new business. His new software platform helps anyone model chemical compounds to design new drugs for free. Contributors are paid in the official crypto, Martin Shkreli Inu, which has recently crashed following an alleged hack. It was his previous involvement with the drug industry that made the pharma bro famous. A few years ago, Shkreli notoriously hiked the price of a life-saving drug by more than 5,000%. In response to all of this attention and doctors and patient groups saying they can't access this drug, are you gonna change the price? No. He was called the most hated man in America after raising the price of a tablet of Daraprim from $13.50 to $750. I probably would have raised the price higher, is, is probably what I would have done. So how did a guy who started two hedge funds in his 20s end up founding Turing Pharmaceuticals? He has a BA in business administration from a city college in New York, yet made the switch because there wasn't enough money in hedge funds. You could say that that is the biggest dickhead answer ever, as he admitted to Vanity Fair. In 2015, Turing Pharmaceuticals acquired the rights to Daraprim, which treats a rare infection from the parasite Toxoplasmosis. Babies born to women infected during pregnancy can go blind or suffer brain damage, and it can be fatal in people with compromised immune systems, such as those living with HIV. There's no excuse from going from $13.50 to $750 for one pill. And he looks like a spoiled brat to me. You want to know the truth? He looks like a spoiled brat. A spoiled brat is far from the way he grew up. Shkreli was born in Brooklyn in 1983 to immigrants from Albania. His father worked as a doorman. Both his parents also held odd jobs as janitors to support him, his brother, and two sisters. He's described himself as the most successful Albanian on earth. Yet many described him differently, targeting him as the arch villain of the pharma industry, a symbol of modern day greed. What Shkreli did was actually not new. Drug companies have a history of raising prices, yet they didn't generate the headlines Shkreli did, perhaps because he was so unapologetic about it. No one wants to say it, no one's proud of it, but uh, you know, this is a, a capitalist society, capitalist system and capitalist rules and my investors expect me to maximize profits, not to minimize them or go half or go 70%, but to go to 100% of the profit curve uh, that we're all taught in, in MBA class. It didn't help that as people complained that healthcare in America was becoming unaffordable, he portrayed himself as a wealthy hedge fund guy, dishing out two million at an auction to buy the one and only copy of an unreleased Wu-Tang Clan album. And when Congress grilled him over the price hike, he trolled them. Do you think you've done anything wrong? On the advice of counsel, I invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination and respectfully decline to answer your question. Is it pronounced Shkreli? Yes, sir. See there, you can answer some questions. That one didn't incriminate you. And I truly believe, I truly believe, are you listening? Yes. He didn't say much during the hearing, but he's defended his actions as having minimal impact on the healthcare system. Because Daraprim is only used by around 2,000 Americans. He said for those without insurance, his company would sell Daraprim for just a dollar a pill, noting more than half of his patients get it for a buck. For everyone else, insurance would cover the cost. There isn't consequences. They have insurance. I don't know if you're familiar with healthcare insurance. I've heard of it, yes. Yeah. Thank you. 90% yeah. yeah. of Americans have it. Yeah. Our, our president forced us to yeah. get it, yeah. I think. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yet, healthcare insurance companies claim they have been forced to raise their rates due to the rising cost of drugs. When you have, for example, the health insurers pay really high prices, that gets expressed through premiums sooner or later. So it doesn't just oh, go of course, away. Of course it does. And, and so the question is, as uh, GDPs grow, and we're, we're at the top of that pack, right? We're, we're the leader. By a long I shot. I think what happens is that we learn as a society that what we prize in life is our health and we're gonna spend more and more on our health than ever before. And that's a good thing. I think it's a mark of a civilized country. Shkreli claims his price hike was for the greater good, that he takes some of the profit and puts it into research to invent a better drug. The least you can do, the least you can do is take those profits and help those patients even more by making a better drug. Like Daraprim is 70 years old. Quite frankly, it is not a great drug. Nevertheless, Daraprim remains the gold standard for treating toxoplasmosis. Medical professionals are satisfied with its effectiveness, and any side effects are manageable. 
I've reached out to Turing Pharmaceuticals, which now goes by the name Viera Pharmaceuticals, to find out how far along they've come in making a new drug, but I have not yet heard back. Its website states it has completed early stage studies to investigate the safety of a novel molecule to treat the parasitic disease. Just a few months after the price hike, Shkreli resigned as CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals after being charged with security fraud. This had to do with the two hedge funds he ran before he switched careers. The Securities and Exchange Commission accused him of lying to investors in his hedge funds about how much money they had and what they were invested in, and in one instance, lost seven million in a disastrous trade. To pay back angry investors, prosecutors accused him of ripping off another drug company that he founded before Turing, called Retrofin. In effect, using Retrofin as a personal piggy bank to take millions in stock and cash. Although the fraud charges were not related to the Daraprim case, Shkreli believes the timing was no coincidence. It's not it ironic that the day they decide to charge is just a few months after the Daraprim pricing. In any case, the criminal charges didn't seem to bother him much. He made faces in court. He boasted in one of his many live streams that if he got acquitted, he'd sleep with a female journalist he previously harassed on Twitter, which got him banned from that platform. Reporter Lauren Duca responded, I'd rather eat my own organs. So much as touch me, and I'll gladly chop off one of yours. It appears he thought he'd win the case. The spirit of Harambe will guide over this trial. And justice will be served. We're going to win by a uh, landslide. But that's not how it played out. On August 4, 2017, a jury found him guilty on three counts of securities fraud. Before sentencing, Shkreli had tears in his eyes as he gave a statement, admitting, I was never motivated by money. I wanted to grow my stature and my reputation. I'm here because of my gross, stupid, and negligent mistakes I made. This was a very different Martin Shkreli than the one the world had come to know. He was free on a $5 million bond while awaiting sentencing. But then the U.S. District Judge revoked his bail and threw him in jail. Judge Kiyo Matsumoto was not impressed when he encouraged his Facebook followers to grab strands of Hillary Clinton's hair during her book tour, offering to pay $5,000 a strand. He said he wanted to use the hair samples to prove Clinton was a murderer by comparing the hair strands to the samples he already had. In another post, he had offered a bounty to find the person responsible for the murder of Democratic National Committee staffer Seth Rich. Shkreli's lawyers explained he was joking, but the judge didn't think it was funny and she revoked his bail. Shkreli ended up with a seven-year sentence. He also had to forfeit the seven million he made from the fraud to the federal government, including giving up his precious Wu-Tang Clan album. The US Department of Justice sold the album to a group of NFT investors who reportedly paid four million for it. Shkreli was released from prison in May, 2022, after serving five years of his sentence. Uh, prison was weird. It's not what it, it's like in the movies. It's mostly just guys kind of like hanging out, playing cards, um, not doing anything too exciting. Gonna probably make some babies, you know, repopulate America. We're having a fertility crisis in this world, so it's important for me to do my job. I think I'm just gonna have like 10 or 20 kids and just Genghis Khan the world. Minus the, you know, the, the negative side of that, you know, the consent version. Um, what else does his future hold besides spreading his seed? He's been giving stock advice on his YouTube channel. He says he plans to release his debut album, God's Gift. And then there's his drug discovery software platform. He technically can't work in the pharmaceutical industry. A federal judge banned him for life, and it's not clear if his new venture violates the ban. The Federal Trade Commission and seven U.S. states had sued Shkreli. They accused him of tightly controlling the distribution of Daraprim making it harder for competitors who wanted to produce generics to get samples for required testing. The patent on Daraprim expired years ago, so other companies could have produced a generic version to bring down the cost. U.S. District Judge Denise Cote found Shkreli violated federal and state laws that ban anti-competitive conduct. She called the Daraprim scheme particularly heartless and coercive and ordered him to pay nearly 65 million in profits to the states that sued him. And I'm going to be fighting that ban and winning. I'm going to hand him a nice big fat L um, and then throw a parade when I win. So. As for his former drug company, Vieira has agreed to pay $40 million to settle the government lawsuit over the price hike. It no longer has a monopoly on Daraprim. Starting in 2020, the FDA approved generic versions of Daraprim. 
Instead of $750 a pill, the nonprofit 46 Brooklyn that looks into drug pricing found the generics are around 300, which is still expensive. However, Ben Link with 46 Brooklyn pointed out to me, if the price of the brand never skyrocketed as much, the generics would likely be cheaper. Shkreli said in a recent Reddit AMA that he still trades, but he expects this coming year to be brutal for stocks. And love him or hate him, it seems like he's right, because the stock market is having its worst start in 50 years, and the US economy is on the brink of a recession, with some saying it's already here. That's why it's important to diversify your portfolio with alternative assets like gold, real estate, and art. The New York Times says when stock markets take a nosedive, people look to invest in art. That's why I'm partnering with Masterworks. Masterworks lets you invest in multi-million dollar paintings by famous artists like Andy Warhol, Picasso, and Banksy. Just like buying shares in Tesla, you can buy shares in these artworks that have been securitized by the SEC. These four paintings gave a net annual return of at least 27%, even through COVID, a bear market, and rising inflation. Not to mention, art had an average yearly appreciation of 33% the last time inflation was this high, according to Masterworks All Art Index. Masterworks is flooded with demand as people are looking to diversify, so there is a wait list. But you can skip the wait list by clicking my custom link in the description for priority access. That's masterworks.art slash newsthink. Masterworks.art slash newsthink. Thanks for watching. For Newsthink, I'm Cindy Palm.